fatty acid oxidation is also called as beta oxidation of fatty acids. The fatty acids are the major energy source that gives approximately 9 kilocalories per gram and the fatty acids in the body are mostly oxidized by beta oxidation. Beta oxidation may be defined as the oxidation of fatty acids on the beta carbon atom. So here what are the sources of fatty acids? Dietary lipids that is long chain fatty acids and fat soluble vitamins which are carried to liver cells in bound form with albumin and the body triglycerides which are used for energy production. So what is the site of fatty acid oxidation? It occurs in the mitochondria of all types of cells like liver, heart, adipose tissue, kidney, lungs, skeletal muscles and only some extent in the brain because the brain is the chief source for medium as well as short chain fatty acid oxidation. Let us have a quick review about long chain fatty acids. Long chain fatty acids are activated in the outer mitochondrial membrane and they are transported across the inner mitochondrial membrane and oxidation takes place inside the mitochondrial matrix. The medium as well as short chain fatty acids are activated and oxidized directly in the mitochondrial matrix. Now let us discuss about reactions of fatty acid oxidation. In the first step, mobilization of stored fatty acids from the adipose tissue is called as lipolysis. And these mobilized free fatty acids are also called as triacylglycerols stored in adipose tissue and hydrolyzed to free fatty acids and glycerol with the help of hormone sensitive lipases. And the glycerol which is released during the lipolytic process is transported to the liver. Later it gets phosphorylated into glycerol 3 phosphate by glycerol kinase and is used as a substrate for gluconeogenesis. And next is the step 2. The free fatty acids which are released from the adipose tissue are carried in the bloodstream which is bound to serum albumin. And these fatty acids are delivered to all the tissues examples like liver, skeletal muscle, heart and kidney except for the brain as well as RBCs. So the fatty acids dissociate from the albumin and are transported into the cells where these fatty acids are acetylated by fatty acyl CoA synthase in the cytosol forming fatty acyl coenzyme A. And this fatty acyl coenzyme A is known as activated fatty acid. And the other name of the enzyme synthase is also called as thiokinase. For this, we need the cofactors like ATP, magnesium and coenzyme A. So these fatty acyl CoA which are formed in the cytosol is transported into the intermembrane space. And the carnitine shuttle is a type of transport system which transports activated long chain fatty acids or we can say long chain acetylated fatty acid across the inner mitochondrial membrane to reach the mitochondrial matrix and how this process occurs. The enzyme called as carnitine acyl transferase 1 called as CAT1 located on the outer mitochondrial membrane where the fatty acyl CoA reacts with the carnitine at the outer mitochondrial membrane to form fatty acyl carnitine which is the rate limiting reaction in this pathway. This fatty acyl carnitine so formed at the outer part of the outer mitochondrial membrane is translocated into the mitochondrial matrix by carnitine acyl carnitine translocase which is the carrier protein present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. 
and the other enzyme called as carnitine acyl transferase 2 which is also called as cat2 present in the inner surface of the inner mitochondrial membrane where the fatty acyl carnitine liberates fatty acyl coa and the carnitine to complete the shuttle the carnitine which is cleaved in this pathway is sent back outside of the inner mitochondrial membrane by the carnitine acyl carnitine translocase and the cycle begins so here whatever may be the fatty acyl coenzyme a which is brought into the mitochondrial matrix for the beta oxidation to occur now it is ready for the beta oxidation proper but in turn the medium chain fatty acids can directly enter the mitochondrial matrix because they do not depend on the carnitine shuttle to undergo beta oxidation proper and now the last step is the beta oxidation proper so this step includes beta oxidation of fatty acids in the mitochondrial matrix so the oxidation system consists of four enzymes that act sequentially to yield a fatty acyl coa that is the two carbon acetyl coa by yielding nadh and fadh2 and what are the reaction sequences of the beta oxidation proper in the first step of beta oxidation proper acyl coenzyme a is dehydrogenated by acyl coa dehydrogenase to produce the product called as trans enoyl coenzyme a where one molecule of fad is reduced to fadh2 so fadh2 is formed in this reaction in the first step of the beta oxidation proper and in the step 2 what happens is that is in the second reaction addition of the water molecule with an enzyme enoyl coa hydratase to trans enoyl coa results in the production of l beta hydroxy acyl coa and this uh, beta hydroxy acyl coa in the third step is converted to beta keto acyl coa by an enzyme beta hydroxy acyl coa dehydrogenase where the nad plus is reduced to nadh and nadh is formed in the reaction 3 of the beta oxidation proper and the last step of the beta oxidation proper where the enzyme known as beta keto acyl coa thiolase splits the bond between alpha as well as beta carbon atoms of beta keto acyl coa as a result one acetyl coa and an acyl coenzyme a which is two carbon atoms less than the original acyl coa are produced so the reputation of these four reactions eventually degrades the fatty acids containing even number of carbons finally to produce acetyl coa as the final product of the beta oxidation proper so this acetyl coa so formed as the end product of the beta oxidation of fatty acids enters into the citric acid cycle which also takes place in the mitochondrial matrix to produce atp and by this process nad and fadh2 whatever so produced enters the electron transport chain again to produce ATP so the fatty acids containing odd number of carbon atoms undergo beta oxidation to produce acetyl coa as well as propionyl coa and this propionyl coa gives rise to succinyl coa and the succinyl coa enters into the TCS cycle because it is an intermediate of the TCS cycle that may enter into gluconeogenetic pathway also let us talk about the regulation of beta oxidation that is lipolysis hormone sensitive lipase is the only point in fatty acid oxidation that is regulated by hormones the hormones like epinephrine and norepinephrine activates lipolysis by converting hormone sensitive lipase to an active phosphorylated form and the insulin which is predominant hormone in the well fed state inhibits lipolysis by converting hormone sensitive lipase 
to an inactive dephosphorylated form and other hormones like glucocorticoids, growth hormone and the thyroid hormone induces the synthesis of hormone sensitive lipase which activates lipolysis. And uh, another regulatory step or mechanism is by the carnitine acyl transferase that is CAT1. So CAT1 regulates the fatty acid oxidation because it is allosterically inhibited by melanoil CoA. If you see in well fed state, more melanoil CoA is produced which inhibits beta oxidation by inhibiting the enzyme called as CAT1. But during fasting states, there will be less melanoil CoA which is produced which activates the beta oxidation by activating CAT1. So by this we can say that in well fed state beta oxidation is inhibited and during fasting state the beta oxidation is activated. So that is the reason insulin inhibits beta oxidation and the glucagon activates beta oxidation proper. And what about the clinical significance of beta oxidation of fatty acids? The important deficiency is the carnitine deficiency or carnitine acyl transferase deficiency. This carnitine acyl transferase deficiency impairs the use of long chain fatty acids for the energy production which causes a common clinical finding such as muscle aches, fatigue, non-ketotic hypoglycemia, hyperammonemia and liver diseases and the treatment includes using medium chain triacylglycerols as fuel source. So if we talk about the medium chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase deficiency, it is an autosomal recessive disorder and the clinical findings are predominantly seen in infancy which includes hypoglycemia, vomiting, lethargy and minimal ketone production in the liver. And uh, next clinical condition is adrenoleukodystrophy. Adrenoleukodystrophy is a defective peroxisomal oxidation where it is an X-linked recessive disorder and the clinical findings are evident with adrenocortical insufficiency, mental deterioration and spastic paralysis. And next is the Refsum's disease. Refsum's disease is also autosomal recessive disease. It is also called as alpha oxidation deficiency. Like beta oxidation, there is an oxidative process of fatty acids called as alpha oxidation. So the deficiency of alpha oxidation causes Refsum's disease. So what are the clinical findings? The clinical findings include retinitis pigmentosa, dry scaly skin, chronic polyneuritis, cerebellar ataxia and elevated protein in the cerebrospinal fluid. And next is Jamaican vomiting sickness. The Jamaican vomiting sickness caused by a toxin called as hypoglycin and it is also called as hypoglycin A. This toxin inhibits medium and short chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenases which leads to non-ketotic hypoglycemia. So other clinical condition is a Zellweger syndrome. Due to the absence of peroxisomes in the liver as well as in the kidneys results in accumulation of a very long chain fatty acids especially in the brain causes Zellweger syndrome. And the most important one after this is the sudden infant death syndrome called as SITS. The SITS is mainly due to deficiency of medium chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase enzyme which leads to blockade in the beta oxidation results in sudden death in infants. So this is what is about the overall clinical picture of beta oxidation of fatty acids.